Right. So, if you saw the Starship Orbital launch today, today is April 20th, you might have also seen the catastrophic failure that was the Starship Orbital launch. And you might be wondering, what happened with that? What's going on here? I thought it should work better than that. So, right now, we don't have any official confirmation as to what happened, but we, what we do have is a lot of camera angles. So let's take a look at those views and break it down and we'll see if we can figure out what happened. Now, looking at the launch, one of the first things you'll notice is an infographic at the bottom left of the screen which shows uh, the pattern of 33 Raptor engines on the Super Heavy booster. And you can see some of the engines aren't highlighted. And those are engines which had failed and weren't running. And you can see that they immediately lost three engines. Now, that's a bit of a problem, but in this case, because Super Heavy wasn't running at full power, it probably wasn't an issue that would have prevented them from reaching orbit. What you're going to see about 30 seconds into the flight is a trail of fire, followed by a bright flash. And what that was is the booster's hydraulic power unit. And it is a system which provides hydraulic pressure to the 13 inner engines on Super Heavy, which are the ones that can gimbal, and they use that pressure for thrust vectoring. And while one hydraulic power unit blowing up is bad, that's not critical because on the other side of Super Heavy, there is another hydraulic power unit, and this one could uh, keep the engines gimbling. But now, as the flight continues, more and more engines are dropping out, and pretty soon we're up to seven or eight engines down. That's roughly a quarter of the total engines that Super Heavy has. So at this point, it's starting to become a big issue. And these engine failures, who knows what caused them. It could be a lot of things. It could be, for instance, a cascading failure, where after one engine failed, it ejected debris, which damaged other engines, and you just get chain reaction like that. But then you start to see something real bad. Well, first of all, you can see that the plume of Super Heavy, which was pretty well clear at this altitude, couldn't see much of it. You suddenly see a trail of orange, and then another bright flash like that one at 30 seconds. And then after that, the whole booster and ship stack starts to rotate. Then the whole vehicle starts to pitch off course, and it starts to tumble. And you know, uh, after a minute and a half of that, they set off the flight termination system. Bit strange that they didn't do that earlier but you know i guess it's more data so what caused this you might be thinking and right now my best guess based on the video that we've got is that the bright flash which we can see here that was the second hydraulic power unit failing and without that second hpu they'd be rapidly running out of hydraulic pressure and those inner 13 engines would lose their ability to gimbal, and they would prob probably be left just swinging around loosely with no real intentional direction to them. They'd just be wobbling all over the place. And that would start the whole stack tumbling, especially because you can see a lot of the engines which failed were on the same side of the booster, so it's going to tend to naturally tip in that direction, unless the thrust vectoring is actively fighting that. And then the other thing you'll notice is the ship never separated. If Starship had separated, at that point it probably wasn't going to make it to orbit anyways. There's a couple of possibilities for why the ship didn't separate, and the most likely one is that at this point booster was tumbling it was out of the normal flight path so most likely the computer controls that would uh, determine if it was safe to separate the ship said nope we aren't going to separate it 
and the pins just never released and they let it uh, drop as one piece because just one individual part is going to be a little bit easier to blow up and keep the debris within the hazard zone. Now, all this I've just said, um, that is just based off of what we can see and what we know. So SpaceX will have a lot more information than us and they will be doing a very detailed review as to what went wrong so that doesn't happen again. And there's a possibility that they'll find that the failure was due to something completely different from what I've just said. And I will be excited to see what went wrong and how they're fixing it. 